Okay then folks, what I'm going to do now in this little video is I'm going to set up just a wall in the background and a floor plane. Um, it's just going to be grey to be honest, but just so we've got something in the background there. Okay, so I'm going to come into, um, uh, into Maya by here into the perspective view. I'm going to go um, plane by here, polygon plane, and it's just going to make, by the way, it's made it on, on the ground, but then it's really small. All you can do is hit F on the keyboard and it'll frame it, okay? But yeah, what I want to do with that is I'm just going to get my scale and I'm going to just scale it up like that. Um, and so, yeah, this is basically what I want, okay? It's just going to make the, um, yeah, make my floor plane sit on the floor, funnily enough. I am going to turn, this is my render view at the moment, I'm going to go to um, panels and camera one, just so I can see, yeah, but we don't need to do the floor anymore. Um, what I'm going to do is maybe move the floor touch this way. And yeah, I want to make a wall now. So in order to do that, um, I may need to make two. In order to do that, I'm just going to get this plane in the outliner, control D. And what I want to do is I want to rotate it up on this axis. So first of all, um, I'm going to, uh, basically I've got a secondary plane here now, haven't I? Because I've just duplicated it. What I want to do is if I hit insert on my keyboard, you'll have a look at the pivot point for here. Basically, like in After Effects, we want to move the anchor point to here. So we rotate it around this point. So if I hit insert on the keyboard, you'll notice it changes. What I then want to do is come up and snap two points. Now I've hit insert. I've hit this magnet up here, snap to points. As I pull through, it snaps to these individual vertices, okay? I'm now going to turn off snap to point and I'm going to hit insert again. And it's basically now back to my um, move tool. But now if I rotate it, hit E, it's going to rotate around that axis, okay? So just come into channel box and you can go right. So we know 90 degrees is a wall. So oh, let's translate. <laughs> let's um, undo whatever I just did. Click off, undo, yeah. Um, so the rotation is, yeah, 90. So just click in here, 90, and we've got a wall, okay? So um, all I did is I, very quickly, one more time, I got the plane one, control D, I hit insert, which means I can move the pivot point, and I made sure I click this up here, and it snaps, and click that off, hit insert again, and now when I rotate, it just rotates around that angle. So I'll delete this one. So that's what we've got. Now let's see what happens if we do a render, because I haven't thought about this. Let's get our render view up. So this was um, the previous one. Um, so let's save that image and let's do another render just to kind of see what we get. And we uh, it may affect our, reflect, uh, our reflections slightly. So let's see how that's affected it. Actually, you know what? I much prefer that to that. It really controls the reflections and the refractions. You know what? I absolutely love the way that's looking. Um, so I'm going to leave that. <laughs> I'm so glad I did that. Um, yeah, so that that's great. Um, let's just have one final. Yeah, cool. Um, right, anyway, moving on. Um, render settings. So I've set that up. Let's just go render settings. It's this little clapperboard with the... Um, cog wheel, or you can click it here. Um, so first of all, let's look at the common tab. Uh, renderable camera, we actually want to change this to camera one, because when we do our final render, uh, if you couldn't find that, just scroll down, renderable camera. Uh, we actually want to change that to camera one, okay, because that's going to be the camera that, this is the view that we're going to render, okay? Um, we're not going to look too much at any of this now. We're going to look at this when we do a batch render. Um, we want to look at the sampling in here, okay? So you, my renders may have been coming out better than yours. Um, in terms of the samples, let's um, let's make this a little bit larger. Can I make that larger? Yeah. If I turn my um, samples down to one, 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 let's now give this a render. Yours may have been noisier than mine. I mean, yeah. If yours has been that noisy, first of all, start with diffuse or, or a transmission that's the quality of your reflections and your refractions okay so let's put diffuse up to maybe two let's now save an image and compare it and that may have helped in the refractions so let's zoom in compare it to the previous one yeah it's starting to help 
Also the diffuse I'm going to put up to three. And also the camera, I'm going to put, I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of what's going on with these numbers for this one, okay? But I'm going to go up and chuck the camera up to about three as well. Basically, if you have a look, with diffuse samples, this three is cubed. So we've actually got nine samples. But then all of these ones by here are actually tight, multiplied by your anti-aliasing samples. Look, don't worry, um, but as I chuck this up, notice this now goes to 36. So it really chucks it up. So you want to be careful. The more you chuck these up, if you put that up to 10, it's going to take hours to render a frame, right? So you just want to kind of increase these. Specular is your reflections, so your quality in the reflections. Diffuse is the light that's being bounced around from the HDRI onto the table into these shadows. And let's, so I've got 233. Three. In fact, I may go 2, 2 and bring this one up to 3. Okay, and I'm going to give this one a render. Let's kind of see what happens, how this looks. Well, what we're looking for is have we got any sort of noise, digital noise in there. Um, it's taken a little bit longer to render this time, so I reckon the quality is really going to be fine. Um, so let's just have a quick look. Yeah, this is coming through really nice soft shadows. I'm loving it. I'm going to zoom in and have a little bit of a closer inspection, but for the most part, this is working how I want it to work. And yeah, I think these numbers are actually working. So yeah, let's have a look. There is still a little bit of noise. Um, so let's have a pan around. Um, shadows are kind of okay, a little bit of noise in there still. A little bit of noise in here. So with all the noise in the sort of color by here, I know that this is sort of diffuse lighting, okay? And especially if you look on the wall, yeah. This diffuse needs to go up, I reckon. I'm gonna chuck it up to three. And let's um, let's keep it back down for two for now, actually. I'm just gonna get my render region and ah, it's gonna render that region now. Um, I, I need to, I wanna draw it on a smaller area. So let's zoom in and I'm gonna draw it by here, okay? Now I'm gonna increase the diffuse to three. And I'm going to say, click right, render this region by here, and hopefully that should be a, should have been a little less noisier. Let's increase the anti-alias in or the camera to four, um, and let's just render that region again. Basically, it's playing around. You just got to play around, and that's that's looking a lot less noisy now. So I know it's going to happen to the rest of the frame. Subsurface scattering. I haven't got any of this going on, so don't worry about that. Transmission is your refraction. The refraction's looking okay. I'm going to pull that up to maybe three. Um, and oh, that's a specular, sorry, that was the reflections. I think I'm going to pull that up to three and maybe five, three, three, three. Now, this is going to take a long time to render. Um, so let's pull this out, and I'm probably going to have to pause the video. Um, but this is going to take a long time to render. So I'm going to hit the clapperboard and let's see how long it takes. Right then, folks, so that took three minutes and three seconds. And to be honest, yes, it's at a point where I'm happy. However, you really need to bear this in mind now moving forward that when you do get to the end, you know, three minutes and three seconds is going to take a long time to render 10 seconds, which is 250 frames. And we can do the maths, 250 times three minutes, that's 750 minutes, which is 12 and a half hours. So with these settings to render 10 seconds worth, that's 12 and a half hours worth of render time. So we just need to bear that in mind when you're using the render settings. It's getting a balance of quality versus time to render. So this is the final image, and I love it. I love the way it looks. However, what you need to bear in mind is look at these samples where it says, wait, when you increase all these, I could probably pull my transmission down, and look where it says max 875 at the bottom. Just, you know, pulling these down, it's gone to 750 now. And again, that, that's, that's going to really, really help you. So only put these up as much as you need to. Okay, so yeah, that's basically the render settings. These are so important, just, just look at them, okay? If your image is too noisy, then you know you may need to increase some of these. Diffuse is the sort of, just the kind of colored light that's being bounced around onto these surfaces. Specular is your highlights. So if your highlights just are really noisy or something like that, then you need to look at that. Um, transmission is your refraction. So again, if, if the refraction's all blurry or not looking right, then have a look there. And subsurface scattering, I haven't got any in there. Um, so yeah, 
and again have a play around see, see with volume indirect you could probably actually yeah take that down um but again it didn't affect up there because i haven't got any indirect volume in there i'm not going to go into what that is um but yeah look this took three minutes three seconds okay um so bear that in mind with your render settings have a look at these samples up here um, anyway i'm gonna leave it there um and yeah i'm gonna do one or two more recordings now for you